For our next example, we're going to do the Atwood machine. This is the lab that you're going to actually do, um, I believe, the fifth week. And we have a mass of 20 kilograms, a mass of 30 kilograms, and they're connected by a continuous rope. So the tension is the same all the way through. And the pulley system here is going to merely change the direction of motion. So what we anticipate is going to happen, that larger mass is going to cause an acceleration downward, and the result is going to be that smaller mass is going to accelerate upward. So our positive direction, our total motion, if we follow this through, is going to look something like this. That's the direction of our po positive motion. So upward motion, um, change in motion for the small one, downward change in motion for the large one. So again, those accelerations are going to need to define our coordinate system for each of the masses. They ask, what is the tension in the rope? And if mass one starts at rest one meter above the ground, what is its speed when it hits the ground? And of course, that's a kinematics problem. We'll need to know what that acceleration is. Why is that acceleration not 9.8? If I cut the rope, it would be 9.8, but that tension is going to cause it to slow down a little bit or reduce that acceleration. So it'll have gravitational force pulling it down, and I'll call that mass 1, excuse me, mass 1. But this force of tension is going to slow that down a little bit, so it won't be 9.8 meters per second squared anymore. Okay, so let's draw our two free body diagrams, one for mass 1, one for mass 2. We need to solve for the acceleration, we need to solve for the tension. Two unknowns requires two equations. Let's do our first mass. Mass 1 is the one that's 30 kilograms. Do be careful that you're labeling or keeping track of which mass you're drawing the free body diagram for. So this is force of gravity 1, which is mass 1, times gravity, and if you multiply 30 times 9.8, you get 294 newtons. That's the downward pull. And with no rope, that would give me an acceleration just of 9.8, and I'd go straight downward. But I've got this force of tension, and that's counteracting it. We do have that the downward force is stronger, though, because we net, end up with a net acceleration down. So again, that defines our coordinate system. We have to have down as positive. Let's do our summation of forces with down being positive. And this is in the y direction. We have 294 down, tension up, and that equals mass 1 accelerating. So I've accelerated mass 1. That'll be equation 1. Two unknowns, so we need a second equation. Let's do our picture for mass 2, which is only 20 kilograms. Free body diagram, force of gravity 2, 20 kilograms times 9.8. So the weight of this one is 196 newtons, and tension pulling up. And this one has acceleration upward. So our acceleration defines our coordinate system. This is going to be a positive force, and this one is a negative force. Let's add those together with up being positive. That means the force of tension is up. Weight is pulling down, 196, and this is accelerating mass 2. So there's our second equation. So we have two equations, two unknowns. And let's look at our two equations. We may be able to solve this pretty cleanly. Equation 1 is that 294 minus Ft equals m1a. Equation 2 is that Ft minus 196 equals m2a. And I'm going to add equation 1 plus equation 2. And I'm going to add everything on the right side together. Um, excuse me, left side together, everything on the right side together, so that it's still going to be equal. And I can see that I have a positive 294, minus Ft plus Ft. So the Fts cancel, and then a minus 196 equals M1, M2, and I'm going to factor out that A. So it looks like I need to find out what the net force is. I had 294 pulling down, 196 pulling up, so that gives us a net force, 
and we're going to divide it by the total mass. So let's divide through by the total mass, mass 1 and mass 2. That isolates A by itself. Mass 1 plus mass 2, still equaling all A. And if you put 294 minus 196, divide by mass 1 was 30, mass 2 was 20, so we'll divide by 50. You get an acceleration of 1.96 meters per second squared. And I'll put our A again. And let's make sure everything's equal. A equals 1.96 meters per second squared equals the difference divided by the total mass. And that's where we got it, equals A. So this kind of makes sense. If we took this as a whole system, and we look at this whole system, um, we've got a weight pulling down, and then our whole system, and a weight pulling down. This one was 294, this one was 196, this one was stronger than this one, and our direction of motion, this was the positive direction. So this was a positive force, this was a negative force. The difference between those is what accelerates all the mass inside here. And we get what that um, acceleration is then. And now we could go back to either um, equation 1 or equation 2 to solve for tension. So if we use equation 1, we have that 294 minus the force of tension equals mass 1 times acceleration. We know what our acceleration is. We know what mass 1 is. So we should be able to solve for Ft. So we could solve for that internal tension. Now the problem did ask, um, if it starts from rest one meter above the ground, what is its speed when it hits the ground? We now do a little kinematics problem. We know our acceleration is downward at 1.96 meters per second squared. We know our initial velocity was zero. Final velocity is what we're looking for, but we know the distance here is 1.0 meters, or we could say that we start at the origin and we go down one meter. So try the kinematics problem, set up kinematics, see if you can solve for what the velocity is when it hits the ground now, knowing the acceleration, initial position, initial velocity, final position, and um, we don't know anything about time, but I bet that last third equation will solve it for you. Okay, let's do one more example with um, force diagrams.